Oh, yeah, We've been you. talking about uh, different artists that you've, you've worked with over your illustrious career. So I actually have a list. So I'm going to read off this list because I can. So um, so you've worked with Drake, Rush, OLP, which is Our Lady P, Sloan, The Fray, NSYNC, Some 41, David Usher, Moist, The Tea Party, Anne Murray, Busta Rhymes, Tom Cochran, Mr. Life is a Highway, mm -hmm. uh, Sean Desmond, and Trouble Charger, uh, just to name a few. Right. Uh, that's insane. That is like a who's who of, of the music industry. So my question is, of all the artists that you've ever worked with, and it doesn't have to be, you know, the names that I just rattled off, um, which artist were you the biggest fan of right. before having worked with them? So it's like you could have been a fan of theirs as a kid and then you ended up working with them someday or you're just a massive fan and you, you happen to work with them. Uh, were, was there anyone you were just a massive fan and then you end up in the studio with them? Like, oh my God, I'm actually a part of their history now. Well, I mean, there's two. Uh, one's an artist and one's an actual behind the scenes person. Um, so the artist, I mean, would have been the Tea Party. I mean, I remember seeing those guys on their first record um, at the underground at York University. I had some friends that were going to school there at the time. And they were like, yeah, you got to come check out this band, this band called the Tea Party. They're really cool. And the live show just blew me away. I mean, those guys, to be honest with you, I've seen a lot of live bands and they've probably got one of the best live shows in terms of energy that I've ever seen. Um, and it's not just Jeff, it's just, well, both Jeff's and, you know, and, and Stuart, like, I mean, they're all really, really good at what they're doing in terms of- They were of a three piece, right? Did they play as a three piece live as well? They do, yep, they do. Um, so, so I was a big fan of them um, musically and just in terms of their musicianship. Um, so yeah, so it was kind of surreal to, you know, a few years later, you know, I, to end up in the studio working on a record with them. Uh, you know, it was really, really cool, especially to see, you know, at what level they were at in the studio, you know, it, it didn't disappoint. I mean, you know, Jeff Burroughs is a very underrated drummer, to be honest with you. I mean, I think he's one of the most solid Canadian drummers that are out there. He's an incredible drummer, um, very Bonhamesque kind of style. Um, at least in my opinion, um, what, what makes a, uh, uh bonhamesque style very very groovy very it, it always the the review that he would get is it sounds like he's playing on the top of a mountain yeah well i mean that would be the sound i suppose yeah. um for for me um bonhamesque is just very uh groove i mean it's all about groove you know uh bonham was always somebody that l knew how to lay back you know with the drums and not push the beat he always kind of sat behind it which kind of gave it this this draggy kind of groove feeling, right? I find that JB, when he plays, uh, well, Jeff Burroughs, not John Bond, well, both of them. They're both JB. Uh, yeah, they're both JB. We're gonna talk about Justin Bieber next. <laughs> Continue. Uh, so, so yeah, when John plays, or sorry, Jesus, when Jeff <laughs> plays, I find that there's definitely some similarities in that. Um, I also heard that Bonham was a very heavy hitter um, and, and Burroughs definitely is a very heavy hitter. I mean, he's he smashes his drums, you know, so. So you, so you said the tea party and then you said there was a second one that you were a big yeah. fan of. So, so one that I actually was, was really happy to work with, uh, was, um, Dave Ogilvy. Uh, now Dave's a producer engineer who's that's Trent Reznor. That's a nine inch nails member. Uh, no, he was actually, producer. he was the producer. He produced okay. the nine inch nail stuff. He produced Marilyn Manson. Yeah. Um, he was part of skinny puppy back in the day as well which was you know kind of one of the bands that kind of started that whole industrial movement mm. um canadian band from vancouver um so so dave was part of all of that and and to be able to actually sit there and and you know be in a room with a guy that was you know a part of some of my favorite records which were you know at the time nine inch nails records um and marilyn manson but really trent Reznor, you know if i found his production was just insane um and just as an artist and to be in a room and learning and watching a guy that worked with Trent um, and was able to please a guy like Trent was just mind blowing. Like that was probably even more for me, uh, you know, of a stargaze moment or a star. Well, yes, a stargaze, Jesus, a starstruck moment uh, than it would have been with the Tea Party guys. You know, it was just because I was a tech at that point. It was like, oh, here's a really cool tech that I really admire. So. Hmm. So, so David Ogilvy, so that would have been like early nine inch nails, like pretty hate machine and downward spiral that yeah. it was kind of the, the first few albums, right? Um, I believe he would have, I don't know if he did pretty hate machine. Cause I think Trent did that one on his own. 
Um, I think he was part of after Downward Spiral. He came in a little bit after. Mm, the the fragile and yep. and those ones. Right. Man, it, you know what? I was asking, you know, who's the most talented, you know, musician you've worked with or, uh, you know, those kind of questions. Every now and then there's a musician or a producer where you can just feel genius, you know, and Trent Reznor is one of those where, man, that guy is just a genius. Like whatever, you know, if you could spend a day in his mind, I mean, it would probably be a scary place, but there'd probably. probably, probably also be a lot of genius going on, man, for that guy to come from, you know, to help popularize, you know, that groundbreaking style of music that, you know, it's, it's, its own genre and, and, to be such a genius with all the technical side of the uh, engineering and producing, mm -hmm. and then to go on to, to do video game soundtracks like doom. And then from there to go on to be kind of the hottest um, film, you know, film score, I guess, or film composer, right. uh, you know, he, he, he won the Oscar for uh, the social network and then he right. wins the Oscar for uh, he just won for soul, I think. And I think he was nominated against himself. I think he did Mank as well. Right. Uh, he had two two of the movies that were nominated against each other. And I think he won another one in there, maybe for the the girl with the dragon tattoo. Or there was a, like literally every year mm -hmm. uh, he's nominated for another Oscar. And this is coming back, you know, from, you know, 1989, this this punk with long hair making industrial grunge music like who would have thought he's making a jazz album for the movie soul for disney pixar and he wins a grammy so anyways sure. i'm just i'm just spitting off stuff about trent reznor i don't know if you have anything to say about all that stuff but no well i mean that's the thing is it's it's all about musicianship right i mean he's this very strong musician people don't understand it or don't necessarily know it because it's kind of like well he just works with midi all right but it's a different type of workflow it's not you know, and again, this is not discrediting or, 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 or generalizing for, for what's going on these days. But I found that there's some musicians out there nowadays, it's just about dragging and dropping loops. And, you know, and, 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 and again, there's a talent to doing some of that, you know, the DJ style music production. Um, but for him, like, I mean, the guy's a prodigy at piano, you know, so he's an incredibly talented piano player, um, and then picked up other instruments along the way. So, so I think the fact that he has gotten to where he's at nowadays probably has a lot to do with the fact that he started off as a fantastic musician that understands music. It's cool how he incorporated kind of a classical piano playing into that heavy music, the industrial and, and rock and heavy metal. You know, you think of uh, um, Hurt, I guess, mm -hmm. Hurt, the, the Johnny Cash covered afterwards. Yeah. So you have this haunting piano in there and... Um, you know, playing piano helps him with all the MIDI stuff, right? All the sounds that he can make uh, in the, in the studio. Uh, the 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 two best live shows I've ever seen are both Nine Inch Nails. And right. what's crazy is I remember driving from Ottawa to Montreal to see Queens of the Stone Age, and it was Death from Above, nineteen seventy nine, that were opening. Right. Then it was Queens of the Stone Age, who I was there to see, and then it was Nine Inch Nails headlining, who. I was familiar with, I, I knew they were good. I just didn't get it. Like I kind of respected them without being a fan. And even though I was there for Queens of the Stone Age, the Nine Inch Nails show was the best thing I'd ever seen in my life. Like the the lighting, the sound, the performance, um, the, 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 the equipment, the, this, just everything. It was absolutely mesmerizing. Like you could feel that a genius's touch what it was at work, the entire concert. And then years later, I saw them at the Made in America Festival in the US, which is uh, Jay-Z's festival. And uh, what's funny is the headliners on one of the nights, it was uh, Queens of the Stone Age again and Nine Inch Nails. Right. And, uh, it was a completely different show. Like it wasn't even, it's like they redesigned the concert from scratch every tour. And uh, Mrs. Uh, Jay-Z, uh, was the other night's headliner yet Beyonce as a headliner. So, right. No, I mean, that's the thing it's, you know, I've, I've seen them live as well and they're, they're fantastic. I mean, I actually saw them on a tour that was called the Ninja tour when it was them and Jane's addiction. 
oh, which wow. is which was really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, what I find really sets artists apart is the fact or, or the ones that understand that it's show business. It's not just the music business, it's show business. And they put as much effort into their live show as they do into the recordings. Right. And and Trent is definitely a master at that. Tea Party is as well. Um, you know, another artist that I saw back in the day, and this was, you know, uh really blew my mind because I didn't expect it, although I knew he was he was a great, but it was James Brown. Wow. Um I saw James, I'm not that old. Um, I saw James Brown with Jack Soul. So James Brown had come around uh, and he had opened, or sorry, Jack Soul had opened for James Brown. Uh, this was probably around, I'm going to say 05 or 06. So, I mean, you can imagine how old James Brown was. And the dude was all over the stage dancing like a fiend. And I'm sitting here going, how is he doing that at that age? You know, but it's just, he did it and he knows showmanship, right? I mean, he comes from that old school of, you got to put on a show. It's not just about listening to music because, and this is something that I really strongly believe in. I mean, if I'm going to go to a show, I want to see a show because if I want to listen to just the music, I'll just throw on the record at home, right? Or stream it or whatever else. That's what I think really makes a big difference when you see those bands, right? 